Lindbergh's response came a few days afterward. He donned his Lone Eagle flying gear and early one morning took off from Washington in his two-engine Lockheed Interceptor to meet with the American people face-to-face and reassure them that every decision he made was designed solely to increase their security and guarantee their well-being. That's what he did when the smallest crisis loomed, flew to cities in every region of the country, this time to as many as four and five in a single day, owing to the interceptor's phenomenal speed. And everywhere his plane set down, the cluster of radio microphones was waiting for him, as were the local bigwigs, the wire service stringers, the city reporters, and the thousands of citizens who had gathered to catch sight of their young president in his famous aviator's windbreaker and leather cap. And each time he landed, he made it clear that he was flying the country unescorted, without either Secret Service or Air Corps protection. This was how safe he considered the American skies to be. This was how secure the country was now that his administration, in little more than a year, had dispelled all threat of war. He reminded his audience that the life of not a single American boy had been put at risk since he'd come to office and would not be put at risk so long as he remained in office. Americans had invested their faith in his leadership and every promise he had made to them he had kept. That was all he he said or had to say. He never mentioned von Ribbentrop's name or FDR's or made reference to the German-American Bund or the Iceland understanding. He said nothing in support of the Nazis, nothing to reveal an affinity with their leader and his army, and his, nothing to reveal an affinity with their leader and his aims, not even to note with approval that the German army had received or had recovered from its winter losses and that all along the Russian front the Soviet communists were being pushed farther eastward toward their ultimate defeat. But then everyone in America knew that it was an unshakable conviction of the president's, as it was of his party's dominant right wing, that the best protection against the spread of communism across Europe into Asia and the Middle East and as far as our own hemisphere was the total destruction of Stalin's Soviet Union by the military might of the Third Reich. In his low-key, taciturn, winning way, Lindbergh told the American Lindbergh told the airfield crowds and radio listeners who he was and what he'd done, and by the time he climbed back aboard his plane to take off for his next stop, he could announce that following the von Ribbentrop house dinner, the First Lady would be inviting Adolf Hitler and his girlfriend to spend the Fourth of July weekend as vacation guests in the Lincoln bedroom of the White House, and still have been cheered by his countrymen as democracy's savior. And that is where we will pause.